Over the last like month or two, I keep seeing this number 939. Now I'm going to get to the number 939 in a little while. It's actually a scripture that I'm going to read. I, I can't believe some of the journeys that I've been through over this, this year and like, like some of last year that I've been through. And it's the reason that I'm going to read this will be more evident if I kind of give you a little bit of backstory. So I uh, originally went to Catholic school when I was growing up and the word God and Jesus, even saying it out loud right now, has such a negative connotation around it. I can't even tell you. And the reason for that is when I went to school, they would use Jesus and God against you if you didn't do your homework or if you did something bad in class, like God's going to strike you down. You're, you're going to be screwed. You're going to hell, buddy. You didn't do your homework. And it's like, this is what they use. And then I start, you know, back in the day, I started reading like about Constantine changing the Bible around and using pagan symbolism. I mean, for example, Easter is, it was, there was a God, a, a female God that they used to try to appease around Easter. And the reason that we use eggs is because they would kill well, they, they would do a couple of things. They would they would take eggs and they would kill last year's firstborns of their own. They would bleed them out. They would dip these eggs in, uh, in blood and they would present them to this fertility God. Like you just killed your kid. You are obviously had fertility because you had the kid. You kill the kid. You bleed it out. You dip these eggs and, 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 and you know, you, you, you give this offering and we still replicate this to this day. If you colored eggs for Easter, you literally replicated that ritual. So you, you start looking to this and the, the uh, Council of Nicaea and all that kind of stuff and the, how they use the Bible as a, a means for A, Constantine not to get killed because he was being persecuted on both ends. B, a way to control. And then you start thinking about how much control. Now there's some other stuff that I'm not going to talk about in this video because if I did, uh, yeah, I, I can't talk about it. This is what I wish my Patreon was, but Nobody seems to be able to click on my Patreon and go there. That's It's like man is in charge of these words that we are supposed to be reading. So which ones resonate with you and which ones don't, you know, and then you have that like, you know, evil empire looking over you. And this is why the, the new age, the new spirituality, the universe and all that kind of stuff and the tarot cards and angel numbers. And this is why it's so easy for people to start looking into this stuff because they have all of this going into it. But there is, for most of us, this voice in the back of our head that knows that this stuff isn't right and gives us these messages, right? We don't want to. And this is where I think free will comes into play with that whole thing. You can listen to that message. Jesus talked about this message. Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven is within. And you know, there in, in Jesus' script. Now, again, touched by man. So... But I mean, how, you know, like I've gotten some of the original scripts from back in the day. There's the Geneva, uh, I think it's like 1570 or something like that. Uh, Bible, uh, that is real to the point and stuff, you know, so you can read that. So you can find some of these scriptures that are from back in the day. I, you know, do do the best you can. And this is why some of the stuff propagates, but when my, my mother was growing up is when there was a huge separation from the church. It was really starting. And you really, st if you really look at the propaganda from back in the day, they were turning the church into something that was going to be against the people. And it just keeps coming at you, right? This is why my uncles were, uh, my, uh, my mom on my mom's side, my uncles, they don't go to church. They're like, we went enough. You know, we went enough when we were younger. I'm not doing that anymore. I don't want anything to do with it. My mother, on the other hand, and my and her own sister, like she goes to church, but like, you know, why? But my mother, on the other hand, I mean, she's involved with it. She's in the choir. She's in a, she was going to be a nun until she met my father. And she still to this day says, I can't believe I got so lucky that this man actually wanted to marry me like because he's such a nice guy and he will do anything for anybody and he, he's not ugly by any means. I've actually seen him be proposed to twice uh, while I worked with him <clears throat> by customers. So, you know, it's just like, so, and I, I don't fall far from that tree, you know, of my father. And, and it's just, it really, it, if you are like that though, you do get taken advantage of because I will do things for, for anybody, which is why 
I've kind of tailed back on some of that kind of stuff because I'm like, I can see, I can see this pattern happening over and over and over again, but I, can't, I, I don't want to change who I am too much, you know? So it's just like, so you have all this and you watch all this and you watch them and like on my dad's side, I have no idea how they feel about it. My dad doesn't even talk about it, but the dude loves going to church and like, he actually has a garden at the church. It's like a two acre garden. So I have this like conflict of like me going to, to Catholic school them saying we're going to hell because we didn't do our homework and, and and all that kind of and so this is why I started looking into this new age spirituality stuff and like I still to this day like what what did Wayne Dyer teach like he was one of my go-tos like go-tos I always I looked at Tony Robbins as like a fake I like I never really trusted the guy so I never put too much uh, weight into him the Deepak Chopra guy he always seemed like a money bags to me, but Wayne Dyer seemed like he was different. Like he really had something going for him. But then I, 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 I remember one of his speeches in, in like, if a crystal chair would, uh, cure my hemorrhoids, I would, I would use it. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know about this guy now. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know about this, you know? So, but you know, I didn't think that at the time, but now like thinking back, I actually just, I had an entire book of his CDs, like hundreds of his CDs, and I just throw it out. I cleared, this house has been cleared out, I'll tell you what. And after what my mental state has been over the time of doing this, I finally came to a point. I'm like, I have been borderline <laughs> miserable ever since 2000, really, when I was 20. Like, I've, I've suffered with this, and I'm like, you've tried everything else, you know, why don't you try this? Now, I'm not saying I'm cured by any means. This is not a, um, you know, everything's everything's cured everything's better kind of thing this is just where i'm coming from and after i've been seeing this damn number and i do not believe in angel numbers anymore i don't believe in angel numbers anymore the twin flame thing even when i went to that tarot reader she's like the twin flame thing is so fake man don't even don't even look into that don't believe anything it says and then how accurate that tarot reading was you know like it's it's been a ride it's been a ride so and somebody said to denounce that that tarot reading how do i know <laughs> here's the thing how do you know that there wasn't somebody on a good side actually holding your hand through that because they didn't want you to go down that evil road and i vowed when i left that thing that i was never going to do it again and i'm never going to do it again because it just i don't know so I, I got all this in my head you know you, you really think about what does god mean to you what does jesus mean to you what does the holy spirit mean to you especially for us cradle catholics or if you were you know going into the church at a young age or from birth like what does it mean to you you know like is it is it one of these things that it just it was used as a weapon against you and if it is it makes it hard to look into this now i'm not saying that we shouldn't have some kind of like morals here like i'm not saying that at all like i've never been one to sleep around i've never been one to i never did drugs i never did i really i drank for like six months and it destroyed my life i've never been into that like the the, the opportunities have definitely presented themselves especially with the women and i never i never went down that path i never thought it was a good path to go down i just always thought like it's just there's something that doesn't feel right about this and I would have these dreams about like, had I gone through with it, I would have had a kid and everything would have been terrible. And, you know, like it was so the, these dreams were telling me that that, that I, I did the right thing. So I'm going to read the scripture. It's a lot. Bear with me. It is. Um, I didn't look at 939. This is actually page 939 in this Bible, which is going to mean nothing to anybody. So it is Jeremiah 23. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock uh, of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel against the shepherd who shepherd my people. You have scattered my people and driven them away. You have not cared for them, uh, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of the flock from all lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to, the, to, the, to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need, uh, need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, uh, when I will raise up righteous shoot David, shoot to, to David as king. He shall reign and govern wisely. 
He shall do what is, is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be, uh, will be, be uh, shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who, uh, who brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, but rather as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up to the land of the north. And from all the lands to which I banish them, they shall uh, again live on their own land. Right. And then it talks about false prophets. Concerning the prophets, my heart within me is broken. My bones all tremble. I'm like a man who is drunk, overcome by wine. Because of the Lord, because of my holy words, with adulterers, the land is filled. On, on their account, the land mourns. The pasture ranges are, uh, are seared. <laughs> There's, uh, there is, oh my gosh. Oh, bear with me. There is an evil course. There is an unjust power. Both prophet and priest are godless. Okay, and it keeps going on like this. And I feel even myself, I have done some of this stuff. And I have done some of this stuff even in my own videos, even this year. And I probably should take those videos down. Now, I'm not one of these Bible pushers. I'm not going to try to hand Bibles out to everybody. I'm not going to go out with a megaphone in the streets and proclaim Jesus. It's just not going to happen. I would rather do it this way. And if you, if it does you any good, great. But really think about, you know, what you're looking into and what you're telling others about. Even my, I mean, myself, I've got a platform here. Not, not a ton of people. When I make videos like this, not a ton of people watch them. Which might be good. <laughs> And I have another, an entire other channel talking about some of this, uh, you know, new age spirituality stuff. So I question, should I take that stuff down? I guess this is just, you know, I felt called to make this video. Here the video is. I'm probably not going to edit it too much, especially my bambling on reading. I've only been doing it for 40 some years. But, yeah. I think the person who comes into the church later in age is probably better off than those who come into it from a younger age. But at the same time, the schools, the Catholic schools are so much better than the public schools. It's not even comparable. So there you fight with that one too. Right? <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. Anyway, Jeremiah uh, twenty chapter 23. Go read it. See if it does you any good. This is not one of those, like, Jesus saved me. I'm saved. You know, I'm going to save everybody else. It's probably never going to happen with me, right? I'm just, that's just not my temperament. But I am switching thoughts on what I talk about because I the other stuff, it will keep you miserable, it will keep you miserable or like it'll keep you in this like weird, happy, like fake happy, like that weird happy you get after you drink coffee or something like that. You know, it's not a real happy. It's just like altered state. And there's a lot of altered state stuff going on. This has been a journey. This has really been a journey. I'm going to talk about this more whenever I get the message. <laughs> To talk about it or like when i see numbers there's another number i see all the time too but i can't find anything that actually goes along with it this one i just i literally opened the bible today and it happened to open to 939 and i didn't even think that maybe this is what the 939 is that i'm seeing and this king that they're talking about is actually jesus behold the days are coming says the lord when i will raise up a righteous shoot to David. I'm not also, when I said the Christian thing, I'm not hating on him. I've been to the churches, not like I haven't. It just didn't feel right to me. To that end, though, they are usually happy. Like, I'm like, why are you so happy? Why? Like, why? How does it happen? Like, how do you get this happy? I, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I feel like I'm not actually a miserable person, even though I said I have. Uh, that I was, I actually am usually joking around and having a good time, but the, the super happy, like confuses the hell out of me. I'm like, how, what, what are you doing? Like, how does this happen? Like wh what? I, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't even know if I want to understand it. You know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just, you know, not, some of us just are not going to achieve that level of giddy happy all the time. I don't understand what ha like, how does it happen? 
What did you do? Like, were you born like this? I don't, I don't get it. I, it confuses the hell out of me. And most of the time when it's like super happy, I can't even be around it for that long because it makes me miserable. Like, I'm like, I can't, I, what are you? What are you? Where did you come from? I don't know. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think I've said enough. Go read that chapter if it does you any good. If it doesn't, don't read it. Don't read it. I did not expect for this stuff to st come out of me. Like my mom wanted me to be a priest when I was younger. Cause she's like, you always are studying the Bible and you're always like quoting this and like rebuking things and whatever else you're doing. I'm like, look, I want a wife. I'm sorry. That ain't going to happen. Like it's not going to happen. Not, do I have a wife right now? No. Have I been told by this voice that, that I, that a wife has been chosen? Yes. It is a confusing world out there. So if you are just as confused, Leave that down in the comment section if you feel like it. You know, you're going to get hit with, like, idiots coming out there and, you know, doing whatever they're going to do. Or the swearing. Like, what? Like, I, this is another thing to try. Like, oh, you can't swear. Like, what? What is a swear word? Like, if you go say a swear word to somebody in Japan and they ha can't understand English, English, they're not going to have a clue what you just said to them. So how is it? How, like, I don't. The swear words and stuff like that, some of the, like, I just can't get on board with that. Sorry. Just, no. No. I don't know what this video was. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down because those videos actually tend to get pushed more. I don't know. I'm going to talk about this more. I'm never going to become a priest. Never going to happen. But preaching the good word. Maybe eventually finishing that would be great. I'm fine. I really am. I'm fine. I just, I like, when you really start looking into this stuff, it's like, wow, what was I doing prior to this? <laughs> Luckily, I never did like ashwagandha or DMT or anything. Like, like, I'm always like, like, I'm weird enough, right? I am weird enough. I, my sister tells stories about me to the people that we work with. And I'm like, great. Now these people know, you know. But, and they're like, well, does he do drugs? And she's like, no. <laughs> I've never met anybody who who's like already kind of in that state. Like, anyway, I've, I've, I've closed this video like five times now. I guess I'll finally do it. I feel like I'm really in the flow right now, though. Like that strange happy that I see these people in. And I'm like, why? Why are you like this? Why? I just like, when you see somebody that happy, you kind of just want to like do something to make it go away. Anyways, talk to you in the next one. Oh, if you made it this far, you had better like and subscribe and share this video. Don't hurt my feelings. Talk to you in the next one.